Hey everyone, this is Kyle. I talk about money and if you're new to this channel, hit that like button and share this video. So today we're gonna to be talking about why the average millennial has an average net worth of $8,000 and which is far less than previous generations. So I'm gonna be going off article here and I'll leave the link to the article in the description down below so you can read it. It's not a very long article. It's probably only 500 words. So I'm a millennial. And the average millennial, which I think are people born from 1980 to 1999. I've seen some other places where it says 1981 to 1996, but wherever you are in that range, you're a millennial and I'm a millennial. I was born in 1990. So why does the average millennial have an average net worth of $8,000? First, let's define what net worth is. It's your total asset minus your liabilities. And liabilities are the big thing here because most millennials Millennials, compared to previous generations have more student loan debt and that's a big problem you could have a lot of assets but subtract that from you know all the liabilities all those hundreds of thousand dollars you own in student loans and whatever loans you have those are gonna wipe you out and you know thank fortunately for me I have a net worth much higher than this I've talked about it numerous times in previous videos you can check them all out it's on my channel but the big reason is student loans and it's because textbooks are going up the cost of uh, tuitions going up and then it's not the faults of the lending companies or the government whoever you're borrowing money from it's you have to look inward when it comes to personal finance it's all inward. You can't blame other people. You cannot blame your, even your circumstances. There are a lot of people who are in far worse situations who have succeeded. So if one person can do it, because it's all up to you, that's how you take control of your finances, take control of your money. You have to realize you're responsible for what's happening with whatever you're doing. And I wanna show you in this video several ways you know, for people who are in debt, for people thinking about going to college, people going back to college, you know, how they can avoid this kind of debt. First of all, if you're thinking about going to college or going back to college, a community college or a trade school is worth your time compared to going to a four-year university, public, private, whatever it is, because they're more concentrated as uh, the workforce becomes more specialized in English degree, taking English classes, math classes, science classes, all these crazy classes that you don't really, will never use probably. You know, I don't even, I took six years of English classes, four in high school and then two in uh, college and I don't need them. I'm a native English speaker and in all honesty, you probably don't need it. You probably, if you, even if you were born, if you weren't even born here, you'd probably only need one or two English classes. So the point here is specialize in something. You need to learn, especially when you're younger, what you want to do. And I know it's a big decision when you're younger because no one knows what they want to do, but you have to sit down and think. Maybe the summer, before college or during your senior year in high school, you need to know what you want to do. And then maybe later after you got that job, after you've made a few bucks, you can change that. You can go back to school. But community college or a specialized degree or one of those fast, fast track places like coding boot camps. They're like, I think for 18 months for like $10,000, you can learn to code, get a $100,000 job at Google or Facebook or whatever. So those things are something. And even if you're going back to college, those things are also an option as well. So, but for people who are in debt, who already went through college, who have a degree, who have a job, who don't wanna to, want to go back to school, but still have a lot of debt, if you're a millennial, because millennials are, I think the largest cohort now, you have to realize that paying off debt is something it's a responsibility. And that means you have to budget your money. Whatever you make, it doesn't matter. If you have a job, it works. But if you don't, obviously get a job. There's no way around that. You need a job. You need some sort of income to pay down your debt. And a lot of people can do it. Go to Dave Ramsey's uh, Instagram page. And you see, you know, he has lots of pictures of people with like a blackboard or something saying how much they paid off their debt in this amount of months. And it is possible to pay debt. $100,000, even if you make $50,000 a year, it's called prioritizing your expenses. And your biggest expense is your debt. And it should be your number one expense. Before you pay that down, no mortgaging a house. 
No getting car loans. No getting big subscription packages. Netflix is fine because it's only, I think like 12 bucks a month. You know, you don't have to sacrifice the smaller things, but when it comes to big things, car expenses, uh, so I guess gasoline, um, cause I live in LA, it's super expensive. Housing, you know, all those things. Even if you rent an apartment, those things can cost you a lot of money, especially if you live in a big metropolitan area. Those things can cost thousands, $2,000 a month. If you mortgage a house, do not buy a house if you have any student loan debts. That's the problem. And millennials, even if a lot of them, you can see in this article that a lot of them are not, they're not getting houses. They're mostly renting. Renting is still a big issue because it's still a monthly payment. And another thing they talk about in this article is children. A lot of millennials are putting off having kids and that is actually the right thing to do if you're in a lot of debt. And it's all about prioritizing. Debt comes first. That's why in a business there's uh, shareholders, they, they have equity. And then there's bondholders who have debt, who put money into the company and that's considered debt to the company. And in a liquidation, who gets paid first? Not the shareholders, not the people who have equity, the bondholders, the people who are owed the money, get the money first. So think of your situation as a business and you're trying to liquidate. You're trying to shed off all that debt. So what happens? You need to pay off that debt first before you can get other debt like uh, rent, housing. That the one of the great situations is if you have parents that you know still love you and they're nearby your work or you know even if they're like an hour away. You know it takes sacrifice to live at home with your parents as an adult after college. Um, a lot of millennials are doing that because they have so much debt, but that's one way you can solve your debt problem. You know, you can still pay your parents um, a little bit of rent and you can help around the house um, in lieu of paying the rent, but it'll help you because you're living essentially rent free. You know, you're not going to pay more in rent to your parents at home than renting an apartment. If you, you know, don't have that option, you can always rent, you know, you can share a space with friends or there's a lot of ways to get cheap housing and sometimes it's not going to be in a nice place or it has to be a studio apartment or maybe it has to be far away from your work. You have to consider that because living is a huge expense. Your second big expense is transportation, okay? A lot of times, a lot of people will buy cars, brand new cars, maybe they'll finance a car. And third is leasing a car. Leasing is the least worst of these options, but never buy a new car. Always get it two, three, four years depreciated because it'll lose a lot, it lost a lot of its value. So that means get your car like scot-free almost and then never finance your car that is probably the one of the worst things you could do finance to buy that's that's terrible because unlike a house your mortgage it's like financing essentially a house appreciates in value and a car will depreciate in value unless it's a Lamborghini you can't afford a Lamborghini so what's the point public transportation is an option if you live in a big metropolitan area most of them in the United States especially, and especially more so if you're not in the United States because uh, the rest of the world has embraced public transportation more than the United States. But the United States, if you live in a big metropolitan area, there are tons of bus routes. In many cases, there are subway stations. You can get a bus, monthly trip, monthly subway, whatever, public transportation. You can do it for less than $200 a month and you can get anywhere, work, home, party, anything. And it's great. It'll save you a lot of money because you're putting that money on down payment for a car, transportation. Um, you're putting that down payment on a car. If you're financing, if you're leasing, you're doing that for gas. You don't have to pay gas if you do public transportation. Even better, if you live in a pretty flat area, biking is an also great option. It's healthy, free. I mean, you can buy like a $200 bike and then maybe $20 a, a month to maintain it, but essentially it's free and you get fresh air. It's all those good things. So there are a lot of ways. It's called scrapping your way to paying off your student loan debts. That's why the average millennial has only $8,000 because they have so much debt and they're making it build up. And this net worth will go you know, down maybe to the next generation when they enter their college years. So it's a big problem and it'll continue to get worse until people start realizing they need to hustle but not hustle to make a lot of money like a lot of online marketing gurus say. Hustle as in pay down your debts because that's what's gonna hinder you 30, 40, 50 da years down the road. That's what I wanna talk about. You know, this uh, Washington Post article kind of talks about that, but it doesn't really give much because it's only five, 600 words. But listen, be frugal, budget everything, and you'll pay down your debt. And so your net worth will be much higher because your liabilities are much, much, much less 
than your assets. So that's all I wanna talk about. Remember, if you like this video, press that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you stay up to date on when new videos come out. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos on personal finance, business, and investing. Until next time, I'm Kyle, and thanks for watching. Thank you.